We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are actually finally, for real this time, at the final sprint race of the season so we can finally say goodbye to this God awful format and Final. look forward to, to the chaos from the rest of the rest of the year with the last two races. Uh, but first so we got to go to Brazil. I'm so ready for these to be over. Fix the right format on. again, 2023, just write it off. Go to 2024. I'm over it. Yeah. We, we just, we just need something that isn't this nonsense. <laughs> we need something, not this, not this. this. Is bad. Not Even this. like, Go back to last season's format. Last season's format was fine, and you, we'll we'll even show you the the kind of the good kind of chaos that we're that you expect out of a sprint if we're going to have to endure the sprints um, when we talk about last year's Sao Paulo Sprint Weekend because it was actually a, f- a little exciting for about five seconds, just for five. Yeah, yeah. and I mean honestly, anyone or anything could come up with the better sprint format than what we've got going on this year it sounded interesting when they announced it last year it was yeah. like interesting okay cool we have like this whole sprint shootout thing whatever after the first one i was like nope <laughs> done I'm, because baku was just so bad but yeah like last year we had to deal with like you know what what is sprint qualifying and regular qualifying and and how does it work and how is it different and it was re- really just like a a like a a term, term terminology issue and and now they've they've doubled down on the sprint shootout which is just qualifying um and then you have the sprint race which is just boring and then you have the race race which is just whatever and it just all all leads to as we have been saying from cats are a really miserable three days of formula one that we don't want to have yeah i know we keep saying refer back to that pod but we still mention all of our yeah. sprints in every single sprint weekend like recap and prediction podcast but um it's you know been decided and heavily debated not debated just expressed how much heavily we emphasized heavily emphasized thank you Catherine, for the word choice there heavily emphasized how much we hate sprints and how terrible they are. Yeah. But like Morgan said, this is the last one of the year. Thank God. Yeah. So happy. So happy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And I feel like we just recorded a podcast, but here um, we are. <laughs> because we did two days ago. Time. Oh God bless South American uh, internet, right? Mm-hmm. Ugh. Well, with that being said, we really didn't have a lot of news this week. No, I had I had to dig deep to find something to talk about for this segment uh, this afternoon when I was putting the rundown together. I'm not gonna lie, there there like there there were a couple things that that have, that have happened that we're gonna talk about, but like really, this was not a big news, you know, series of days between races. I can't call it no, a week I mean, because it's not even a week. It's not even a week, and when you have Austin, Mexico City, Brazil so close together. I mean, not a lot is going to, I feel like not a lot can happen when you have so many, so many races right in a row and you're just really focused on racing. So not a lot of, you know, off track things coming to light. But yeah, when I was sitting on the subway today, I was thinking like, huh, we don't really have a lot to talk talk about. I know. Maybe this is our, our golden goose of, you know, less than 40 minutes. Probably not. We'll find a way to go over, but we'll see once we get to the end of this. I, I, I actually, I did think that when right before we hopped on, it was like, could this actually be under forty? And then I was like, wait, we're gonna find some way to go off track and it, you know, get, give us our our usual runtime. If I have to start singing the pledge or saying the pl- pledge of allegiance to get us over forty, I will start doing that just to to keep up our stats. But great. With that being said, I think we can get into the news of the week heading into the Brazilian Grand Prix weekend. Our bestie, James Voles, him and his wife had a baby. Yeah, very exciting news. (laughs) Again, reaching for the news this week, but it's exciting. So James Voles is the... um, Williams. Well, (laughs) 
Thank you. Is the Williams um, team principal. I knew you'd get there. I knew you'd get there. It is, to be fair, it is 9.45 at night. Give me a break. Um, long days. Um, but he is the team principal of Williams, and he's super, super technical. He came over from Mercedes, used to work with Toto Wolf. And we love James Vole's weekends when he speaks to Sky Sports mid-race. He mm -hmm. gives these, like, long, elaborate explanations when if it's a Zach Brown weekend or a Bradley Lord weekend, they would be like, yes, sure, we're checking on it. James will be like, that's a great question. So, and then goes into like the most technical. 10 minutes later. Understands and it's over everyone's head, um, which is why we love him so much. Um, but he does it in like a way that just makes you appreciate him. So it's not in like a. He like, really uh, knows his stuff. And he, it, he, he loves this technical shit. It's he great. Does. It's so fun to see. Yeah. So TBD, if he will be in Brazil. I was kind of, we, it's been a while, I feel like, since we've had a James weekend with Sky Sports yeah. for, the, for the broadcast, so I was thinking that this would be a James weekend, but maybe not if he is taking parental leave, which hope he does. If he doesn't, you know, also good for him, good for us. Yeah. Um, either way, congratulations to the Bowles family, um, and we'll see who we have this weekend for the, for the telecast, but it's yes. uh, interesting. Yeah. In other news related to Mercedes, they just announced yesterday, if you're watching, or as we record yesterday, so it, for, for you all, this will be Tuesday, um, that uh, Chief Technical Officer Mike Elliott is leaving the team after 11 years. Um, he was originally, he spent about two years as their technical director, and then, and I'm saying this in quotes, um, was demoted from, C, uh, uh, from technical director to the Chief Technical Officer. Um, he's going on garden leave, um, which is something that I had to Google, uh, but basically means Means, like he's not going to be working anymore for Mercedes but he hasn't like technically left the company um so I, I think that's really interesting because like he was the brainchild behind a lot of the success that Mercedes had when they went on that run of, of eight consecutive constructors championships so this is going to be really interesting to see where Mercedes goes from here and how this could potentially impact you know next season and, and you know coming to the end of this regulation no, I think it's super interesting. We were just talking in our last podcast how Mercedes is making big strides in um, their car looking towards next season. We think they're, you know, going to be really competitive. So it'll be interesting to see how this, you know, change in leadership will affect their progress. Yeah, Let's exactly. See. TBDs. I love all of the off-track, like, hirings and firings besides the drivers like it's so interesting because it really puts into perspective how many people are actually involved in what's going on yeah and there's going to be a lot of, of changes after after this year obviously we've had a lot of people um exit you know teams especially you know alpine um has had a lot of exits their team principal etc um we have um alpha Tauri's team principal france tossed he's going to be leaving at the end of the season where there uh, i can't remember off the top of my head who that he's being replaced with now but they do have a replacement in line um and it's just going to be really in interesting to see that some of the bigger names um that you know are in the garage on the pit wall um and see where they're going to be coming into 2024 yeah i'm excited for 2024 oh my god I'm 2024 just is going to be crazy season. i'm just looking forward to it the silly season and like oh everyone kind of picking up on the on the technical regulations from you know red bull being so out there this season everyone's kind of catching up so next season i feel like everyone's going to be a little bit more competitive I'm very excited for next season. So, yeah. And clean slate. Max has zero points next season starting out. So, go team. <laughs> Everybody has zero points, and we'll see where it goes. Um, <laughs> but. Looking, looking ahead to um, the next couple of weeks, it looks like the Las Vegas Grand Prix is not really endearing itself, and it hasn't been endearing itself to the locals in Las Vegas and the tourists, um, and apparently it's getting a little worse um, as, as we lead up to uh, the Grand Prix in a couple of weeks. I knew this was going to be a mess. When you said Vegas Grand Prix, 
it just screams mass chaos nightmare like does it not yeah. Race and like not in strip, a good way yeah like obviously that's super cool and good but vegas one i want to know who these locals are like there's not no one lives in vegas they all live in henderson or outside like they're not living on the strip what local lives on the strip whatever i digress but also the the tourists like that's why they come to vegas is to be there and so if you have all this construction going on for so many weeks for three days there's no way this is going to stand for you know season after season there's it's i just don't see it being successful not only that but they're they're not selling for the the rumors are that the numbers of of ticket sales and ticket packages are way low um compared to what they were expecting which makes sense yeah these these tickets are exactly they're they're just it's 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 ridiculous. I actually have a cousin who lives in in Vegas. I should I should re- reach out to her and see what her opinions are because she works or she 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 changed jobs recently, but she had been working um, near the Strip, so she she's she doesn't pretty live on familiar. The strip. No, no, of course she doesn't live on the Strip. She's 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 got a house somewhere not near there. Um, yeah. but yeah, I should, I should see what her, um, what, what, what the vibe is that, that she's getting. I mean, like, at, you know, left, right and center, you're seeing all these teams do these massive giveaways, um, which is a big indicator that they're not getting nearly as many butts and seats as they're expecting. Um, and on it, honestly, like well, you can have a Vegas girl. Cheap seat, the cheapest seat is $500 and that's yeah. like without a view. Yeah. At all. That's just to like go in and be obstructed view, not even see the track and just be like in the fan fair area. And that's just for like a day, I think. I don't even think that's yeah. for a whole weekend pass. That is freaking ridiculous. And you Which can't just you can spend five hundred dollars for an entire weekend at Kota. Yeah. Give or take. Go to Costco. Yeah. Maybe it's even cheaper. Like it's just it's it's wild what they're trying to do. I understand it's Vegas and people will pay more, whatever. But it's just, it's, it's out of hand. Honestly, I think that what they should have done and what they probably should end up doing is it's the Las Vegas Grand Prix in Vegas, not on the strip. Like they can shut down the strip that weekend to like have some, like some of the teams that have their show cars out and have like a little driver's parade on the strip, but have the track beat off the strip maybe it's like behind it in a parking lot there it's, it's a big ass desert there's plenty of space out there like you'll find places they, but that's like you or out of it like racing i know like that's like, like in monaco and then not actually having it like in monaco you know what i mean i think Monaco's different because they're used to that but like just I, I, I just don't think that it's going to it's gonna work out. Um, obviously, it's going to be a great show. It's going to be over the top and completely ridiculous. But from a f- like average fan perspective, which obviously this is not the Grand Prix catering to average fans, but like from an average fan perspective, this is just like they're going to be better off watching it at home. Yeah, and I, I think, Ve- I will say, Vegas does showmanship very well. They will oh, put yeah. on... Grand Prix, it'll be an amazing product. Getting to that product, I think, is there's some growing pains. And next year, the third year, maybe it's going to be a little bit better. Obviously, this year they're having to do it, plan it for the first time, and build the track all in one. Yeah. Also, a brand new track is going to be like wild. Oh my god, the, the drivers the, are going to hate it. It's going to be terrible. Um, but do, you know, Danny Ricardo is just going to be there smiling because he's happy to be in oh, Vegas. Of course, of course, um, of course. It's going to be interesting. I mean. We've talked about Vegas a lot on several episodes. We'll, we'll do a whole in-depth, you know, conversation leading up to Vegas, of course. But I don't know. I'm not completely sold. I'm very excited, but I just ugh, I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah, I'm just because one of the things that I saw today was that residents and tourists are like they have this like visibility film on the the glass pedestrian um, bridges that that you can use to cross over Las Vegas Boulevard without having to you know be down at street level, um, and they've like basically covered it so you can't see because a they don't want people having the free ability to watch a race from the bridge up top because that would be one of the coolest locations to be able to watch, and That's heaven cool. forbid you give that away for free. 
Um, and then, of course, the real excuse is that they don't want people throwing things on onto the track to, uh, you know, at, you know, put the drivers at risk, which well, is legitimate, but also is like that's not the priority here. The priority well, is stopping fans from getting a free view of the race. I mean, having been in Vegas several times and seeing idiots throw things off those bridges, valid concern. Um, lots of drunk people in Vegas, lots of drunk people making bad decisions in Vegas. So I yes. totally get that. But the FIA has been so strict with, and Formula One media, whoever is owning everything there, but whoever is like leading this charge has been so strict in telling like casinos and stuff. Like if you remotely have a view of the strip, you have to charge patrons to come inside. Yeah. If it's not part of a grandstand or part of an official area, that's what they're saying. And because, you know, they're like, no, absolutely not. Like, that's dumb. I yeah. don't know. It's We can talk about this in Vegas because it's, I feel like we could, this is how we get to our 40 minutes, actually. <laughs> it, yeah, it, exactly. So anyway, so we're going to cut this off right here. And we're going to go to um, the, before, before we talk about the race, we're going to talk about the biggest rumor um, that was going through the paddock and was kind of bleeding into social media that I believe is 100% pure, unadulterated bullshit. Um. It's dumb. Dumb. No, Fernando Alonso is not going to Red Bull. It's not happening. I want to know who Fernando Alonso's like sneaky publicist is because, <laughs> but he always is in the news. Is always these wild rumors that everyone knows is not true, like him dating Taylor Swift, and which like, was hilarious though. Which was so dumb and hilarious, and him going to Red Bull so dumb and hilarious. But his name's always in the news. We're always talking about him. So whoever his publicist is, like, doing a great job. Yeah. No, there's been this, um, from, from, what I, from what I saw, there's been this Spanish journalist who has been dropping, like, cryptic posts and rumors, um, or, like, rumors of rumors that he's heard left and right that, like, everyone's in a tizzy over. Um, and a lot of it has been centering on there's a rumor that um, Perez and Alonso were going to be switching seats and Sergio Perez would go to Aston Martin because Aston Martin's not happy with Fernando Alonso, which... Aston Martin is thrilled to have Fernando Alonso in their car as their lead driver, whether, you know, sorry, sorry, Lance, but they're, they're thrilled that he's there. Um, yeah. And, you know, he, he hasn't even been there a full season and the issues that Aston Martin is having are with the car and the development not with the driver. Fernando is in the honeymoon period, which he had with, you know, he's had it with every single team, but he's still in that honeymoon period with Aston Martin, and that's not going to change at the moment, and it's not going to change by the end of the season. No, and also the Spanish journalist was like, oh, no, I don't want to believe what they just told me. It's like, shut up. Like, that's not how journalism works. Yeah, it's like, stop that. But two reasons why Fernando's not going to Red Bull a, he's never going to be a number two driver at a team at this point in his career, and there's no way in hell he's going to let Max get all the glory ahead of him, even if Red Bull is the most competitive car on the grid right now. Um, and B, Honda doesn't like Fernando very much. They, ha- they have a long, storied, not-so-great history. Obviously, Aston Martin and Honda are going to be partnering in the future. Sorry, that's my cat's feeder. It is her dinner time. Um and I'm not going to cut this because this is, you know, I'm on a roll right now. Um, and obviously, you know, Honda's already said, like, we're fine with having um, Fernando in one of our cars. But, like, they're not going to be going to the main Honda team, which is Red Bull. Well, also, it's very well known that Red Bull develops its car for Max. Yeah. And, like, the second driver has to just deal with it. And Fernando and Max are not the same driver. And he's not going to just settle for a car that was developed for a different driver and he has to just deal with it and hope for the best. Like, that's not, even though he's like, you know, going into the sunset in his, you know, what, mid 40s when he will probably retire, like, he's still not going to accept anything less than he thinks he deserves. And he's not a bad driver. No. Like, it's not going to happen. You know, Aston Martin, you know, may be Lawrence Stroll's team for now, um, if if those rumors are to be believed. Um, But this is Fernando Alonso's team, and Lance is just along for the ride. Poor guy. Yeah. He's just, like, holding on to the wing of the airplane as it's taking off. Yeah. Poor Lance. 
Well, that's all we really had to cover for news of the week. Not much going on. Yeah, and we still talked about it for 20 minutes. We did. Most of it was Vegas. Yeah. Because we can talk about Vegas until the cows come home. Oh, Vegas is going to be a long episode, guys. Get ready. We apologize in advance for our Vegas episode. We just have Um, lots of thoughts. Looking, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings. Um, looking forward to this weekend, Sao Paulo Grand Prix, which I can never say Sao Paulo correctly. Sao Paulo. Grand I mean, Prix. my my non-American accent is always terrible, so I just know that I sound ridiculous ninety percent of the time. Well, welcome to the day in the life of Emily Vickislin trying to speak Spanish and me saying, you know, American words and they're the same in Spanish and they'll be like, ¿Qué? and I'm like, ketchup. And they're like, ¿Qué? and I'm like, ketchup. And they're like, oh, ketchup. And I'm like, see. Sí. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Anyways, um, Sao Paulo Grand Prix last year was one of my favorite races. Oh my gosh. Yes. Even if it was I, a sprint. It was, a, I know, shocking that we're promoting this, but biggest coolest thing to come out of it Haas got pole yeah that was amazing like I was on the edge of my seat that entire last bit of qualifying this bit was like when we were still just dming had no thoughts of a podcast yet but we were like dming and I was like wait this has to not be right k-mags cannot have pole and he did yeah and it was like yeah Um, so if if you you didn't if you didn't watch last year um it was it was raining on and off throughout um qualifying and this back this was back in the format where you qualified for the sprint grid and the sprint grid or the sprint uh final position um, set the grid for your sunday race but it was raining on and off and at the very beginning of q3 um kevin magnuson was the only driver who did a lap on slicks. And by the time everybody was ready to go out, they were going out on inters because it was raining and nobody could beat that time. So Kevin Magnuson got Haas's first pole position of their ever, uh, of, of, their, of the, the team's career, which was yeah, amazing. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah. loved it. Even though it didn't end up great for him, we all loved it. Yeah, he got what P eight, but it was still yes. exciting to see him like get that pull and see Gunther Steiner just like freak out. That was so exciting. So exciting. The video call was like so. I love K Mags. He's just like I don't know. He just has like this special place in my heart. Mm-hmm. He just does. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that was a uh, that was like the only exciting thing to come out of the weekend because then George just won the sprint in the race, and I just like don't love George. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if you're a Mercedes fan, it was like the weekend you were waiting for. Um, You know, it was, yeah, George, it was the Mercedes 1-2. It, you know, if if you're a George fan, you were very happy for him to get his first win in Formula 1. He, as always, looks like he's on the verge of tears, and then even more so um, after that post-race. But the biggest drama to come out of it, are you okay? (laughs) I'm about to spit all my water out. (laughs) so hard. Poor Georgie. He really does always look like he's on the verge of tears, though. Yes. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. The, but the, the big drama that kind of that, that overshadowed George's win and also Kevin Magnuson getting pulled was um, during the race, there was a restart. Um, Verstappen was ahead of Perez and then was asked to give Perez position so that Perez could maintain P2 in the Drivers' Championship. And Max refused. Um, and the kind of assumption that they've never come out and confirmed is that Max did that because this was revenge um, on Perez who allegedly intentionally and saying that when quotes um, crashed during qualifying in Monaco to maintain his position in Monaco over Max in Monaco 2022 um, so with that and, and Max said on the radio like he knows what he did um, and that ended up with um, Perez and Leclerc even on points after Sao Paulo and then and Leclerc ended up beating um, Perez in um, Abu Dhabi that in you know to end the season, which is how Perez finished P three and Leclerc got P two in last year's championship. Um, and it all happened in Brazil. Blame it on Brazil. 
But we love Interlagos. Interlagos is a great track. (laughs) No, it is. I really like it, and I think it's fun. And I think they also do a really good job of putting on a Grand Prix. Yeah, they they do. They they love Mercedes. Mercedes has won six of the last eight Grand Prix. Um, the, a single lap is is even faster in at Interlagos than it is in Mexico City, um, and and it should it, it should it should you know give us give us the entertainment that we usually lack because of the sprint format. Yeah, but yeah. So um, if you didn't catch it earlier, it is a sprint weekend, <laughs> and it's gonna suck. Yeah. Not a fan. But you Which know you what? all know it's we're a... not a fan. Wait, are we not fans of Sprint Weekends? Whoa. What? Oh God. I am I no words, I just can't. But I you know, it's the last one. Thank God. It's Brazil. And I think it might get a little interesting this weekend because of the weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's Which... a that it's going to rain on Friday, which just throws everything in out of whack. Like yeah. James Wolves has us multiple times on sprint weekends because it's really hard for them to, you know, test things and get the car to a point where it's going to be okay because quality is in rain and the rest of the, the weekend is not in rain. And um, it could be yeah. interesting. Yeah. And credit to you for, you know, ha- having us think to look about that because we were talking before we started recording about the weather where you live in Argentina. And I was like, wait a minute, if it's raining in Argentina, then what's it's the weather going to be like in Sao Paulo? Cause it's not that far, honestly. It's like a, I think it's a, well, it is, but it's not like, it's like a two hour flight to Sao Paulo. I think that's not bad. Well, you just have to cross Uruguay and then you're there. I mean, there, there there's some, some countries in between, but yeah. So, so had, had, had we not, had we not had that discussion, we wouldn't have looked, but yeah, qualifying on a day or er, rain on a day where you have an hour of practice and an hour to get the car set up. Um, and then you have qualifying and then your car is in park Ferme, which we know, um, is, is really early in a weekend to put your car in park Ferme, And that has been, you know, putting everyone at a significant disadvantage and not in a good way um so it's going to be really interesting to see how that impacts the rest of the weekend and it could lead to some really shock results yeah i was gonna say um what's your bet on how many cars are starting from the pit lane this weekend (laughs) Ooh, i'm gonna i'm gonna say three i'm gonna i'm gonna say that there's gonna be three what about you I might, I might take the over on okay. that, actually. Okay. Oh, and it's also important to know that we are still at altitude up here. Um, it's not as Mexico City, but not we're still Not nearly, at. yeah. So Mexico City was like a mile and a half. Um, Interlagos is 800 meters above sea level. I have not translated that into feet, so if you are an American listening to this, grab your Google and go put 800 meters into feet and you can see how high up that is. One meter is like three feet. So just multiply it by three. So it's like 25, it's half a mile. It's it's half Denver. (laughs) Somebody, somebody works with numbers all day and somebody is a writer. Someone is forced learning the metric system. (laughs) And somebody lives in Imperial. Oh my gosh, the number of times I'll like spit out a degree and people will be like, um, in, in Celsius or Fahrenheit? And I'm like, no, they're like, I think you're wrong. And I'm like, I'm trying so hard. Brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> meters are easier because it's just like a meter is almost equivalent to a yard and that's three feet. The hardest one though is like kilos, grams. Oh God. Meters. Yeah, no. Uh, kilometers. Like I'm in the I'm in the Logan Sergeant camp of <laughs> what the hell is a kilometer because I have no idea. It's so hard. I'll be like, oh yeah, it's like you know six kilometers, 
And they're like, it's like two. And I'm like, that's what I meant. Because sometimes I multiply miles and sometimes I divide. And oh, it's really hard. No, that, that just... reminds me of when, when we were talking about um, Matt, earlier this, this season when Max was kind of in trouble with the local authorities in France for speeding in an Aston Martin. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, how fast is that? And I'm like, oh, that's about the speed that I take when I'm on the freeway. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that that is that just... <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so fast. Wait a minute. That's like, it's like 65 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh God. I wish I was better at the metric system, but it's just like really hard. You're going to nail me. it right before you move home. Oh, of course I will. And of course, I'll, like that's when I'll get better at Spanish too, like right before I'm leaving. So. Yeah. Ugh. Anyways, with that, should we get into our predictions? Let's get into it. <laughs> track of the podcast and go to our predictions of brazil <laughs> okay so apologies in advance everyone but hold on to your horses because we've got a whopping amount of predictions because it is a sprint Spark. weekend so sprint poll Catherine, who you got i'm i'm going with everyone's favorite number two ferrari driver carlos signs oh, love of my life um, I saw you make that prediction and I was like, oh my gosh, Catherine, you're picking Ferrari people. What is Apparently. wrong with you? I know it's I'm weird, sure. right? Um, I have Oscar. I feel like he'll come back from, um, Mexico city and have, he does, he always does really well in the sprints too. So yeah, Some, something about the, that, the weekend format really works for him. So, uh, sorry, yeah. buddy, that's going to change next year. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, and then sprint podium, who you got? I have, sorry, Carlos, but I have Max in P1, I have Carlos in P2, and then I have Checo in P3. It's like we always pick somebody else to for pole, and then it, we just give Max the win anyway because he can win from basically anywhere on that track. I know. I want it, like, maybe one season they'll just be like, okay, Max, you're going to start in this position. No need to qualify. Let's see where you can go. <laughs> That would be really interesting, kind of. I know, right? I'm sure he wouldn't like that, but maybe well, give no. him a challenge. Um, It'd be fun for us. Okay. Oh, obviously. Um, okay, and I have, again, Max winning. <laughs> I have Carlos P2, and then I have Oscar P3. <laughs> yeah. So, there we go. And then for the sprint races... P8 is the last position that you can earn points. You get one point for P8. So we, for sprints, select a P8 driver. So who do you have for P8 for the sprints? I am going with, and I'm probably going to be super wrong because it is at altitude and Haas doesn't do well at altitude, but for some reason I have deluded myself into thinking that Nico Hulkenberg is going to finish in the top eight. So don't let me down, buddy. <laughs> I love this though. We haven't. I don't think we've picked Hulk all season for anything. Um, probably not. Other than who's going to do a dumb. Yeah. So I in that's encompassing of all of Haas. So I yeah. love this. Um, and I picked Yuki. I can see that. I feel like he's always kind of floating towards the bottom of the point. So um, yeah, I I think. I think Danny finishing P7 last week is kind of like lit a fire under his ass to really, you know. Especially because he, he did really screw up last weekend with that, that, that collision with Oscar and that, that, like, that really, AlphaTauri could have had an, an, a double points double weekend points. had he not bungled that, that overtake attempt. Um, but it's good to know that he's still alive and well on that radio. Oh, Don't talk yeah. To me. Don't talk to me. I was like, ah. Yeah. Oh. The Yuki we know and love is back. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of taking a page out of Max's book a little bit with the don't talk to me, I know what I'm doing. Um, but with Yuki, it's just funny. Yeah, the don't talk to me under breaking, not under breaking. Oh, I Bless love radio it. calls. They are the absolute best. Okay, and so moving from Saturday and the sprints, the sprints, the sprint to Sunday, who do you have... Um, getting pole for Sunday. Obviously this will be in qualifying on Friday, which makes no sense, but oh my God. for this yeah. will be in pole. <laughs> yeah, so I've got Max, uh, which is probably a mistake, but I'm I'm picking Max for my uh Friday qualifier and we'll see how weird qualifying goes and what's probably gonna be semi wet conditions. 
I feel like Max is definitely taking the Ferrari strategy of like the lift and coast that they <laughs> keep talking about. Like he's just very much coasting through this, winning everything still, but just kind of coasting through and doing minimal effort and still winning. So, um, but that's, I don't know. We'll see. I have Lewis. Just because Brazil loves him, he loves Brazil. So it seems very, very on brand for Lewis to get pole here. Um, he's also been, he has been racing really well. And his car yeah. is in, you know, better shape and than it has been. So I'm going to give it to Lewis. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, shall, we shall see about that. All right. Then going into podium, who's on your podium? On Sunday. I have the race. Max in P1, and as much as it pains me, I have Lewis in P2, and then my delusional little brain has uh, Checo in P3. Because um, I, I just, I really want to see a good fight for P2. Like, I, I want, you know, for, for all that, that Checo's been, been, been struggling, and obviously Mexico was a disaster for him, like, I really want it to be an exciting fight. And I think that we're going to get that. Um, but I don't want it to just be Perez, you know, kind of disappointing and Max, or, and Lewis being Lewis. Like, I want a good fight. Yeah. No, that's, I do, yeah, I, I like the good fights and I like the good races and just seeing people run away with it and, like, huge gaps is, like, not as entertaining, so. Yeah. Agreed. Um, similar to your podium, I have Max, Lewis, and then I have Carlos. Okay. So, pending, you know, Ferrari strategy. Um, yeah. Carlos usually does well coming off of a weekend where they really favor Charles, so maybe. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. You're we'll not see. wrong. We'll see. I'm not. Um, okay, and then for the race for P10, in the race, P10 is the last position where you can earn points. You get one point for P10, so we select P10, which we've yet to get, I think. I think we've yet to get P10. Um, maybe. I'd have to look. I mean, may maybe one of us got it right once. I, really we're we're going we're gonna to keep better track next season just for – you know, my Stat. analytical brain, my, my statistician <laughs> brain right here. So we'll, we'll, we'll put it in a spreadsheet and actually keep Watch track of it. out for the stats that are coming next, next season. Um, so Catherine, for your P10, who do you have? I picked Fernando. I, I think that, that Fernando is going to try to bounce back after some truly awful weekends where the car's just not been cooperating. Um, and he's going to will that car as high up the grid as possible, which I think the, the highest that he, he can hope for at this point with the way that the car has been is P10. <laughs> Sorry. It's so wild because we were picking him to like win, win races. Pole on podium and now it's like maybe p10 yeah i for my p10 i shot in the dark on this one for me usually is yeah. i went all con okay let's see, best. let's see see where what happens yeah i, th I think alpine needs a, a decent points haul this weekend just to make them feel a little bit better about themselves yeah and and i couldn't Pull myself to put Gasly, even though it'll probably be Gasly who gets P10, but I just never know where he is on the grid. No. Um, and so I think Alpine's really going to try and make a stride and, and get some points this weekend. So I think Alcon is, is going to be in the points. Yeah. Okay. So. I like it. Yeah. Watch them double DNF again. <laughs> oh my God. The double DNF lives on. You know it. Um, so that's it for predictions like for podium placing stuff like that but what would be a big surprise for you this weekend Catherine well like I said when we were talking about the Sunday podium I just really want a good battle between Perez and Hamilton there's only 20 points between them right now um and Hamilton is looking really racy and we didn't have the opportunity to see you know just how well you know Perez could go because he did you know retire after the first corner um in Mexico City unfortunately um so I my I, I really just want to see a, a good show out of those two drivers and really you know take it to that that P2 and really fight for it yeah no and and I you know want, obviously want the best for Checo kind of um I kind of tagged on that as well I said that Checo has a clean weekend um, I don't know how many, you know, fact check me on this cause it's probably wrong. I personally don't remember the last time Checo's had like 
a fully clean sprint and you know grand prix race weekend i feel like he's either dnfing in one or not doing well in one you know making some just not doing well in qualifying and starting at the back of the grid so i feel like he a big surprise would be that he has like a good qualifying for both does really well in both races and like has a good clean checo weekend yeah i think he had a good week i think he had a good sprint weekend in austin I, th- I think it was, like, he, he finished oh, solidly right, right. in the points. Like, it wasn't anything to write home about, but, you know, from a Red Bull standard. But I think he did finish pretty high in, in both in Austin. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. But it was a – that was an awful week. Like, that was just a really boring it sprint race weekend. because he didn't get podiums on anything. So, the, meaning, like, this is a back-to-classic Checo, the yeah. Checo who won races earlier in the year. It's – almost wild to think that that actually happened just with the way that his season has fallen off like it's it's wild to remember that he won races this year yeah wild yeah so all right and with that being said who do you think is going to do a dumb well i am back on my ferrari's gonna screw it up bullshit uh i i just think you know ferrari they they binned it in mexico city they they and i just i i don't think that they're gonna be able to bounce back this quickly um i i think they they need a week between races especially when they you know bungle a front row lockout twice yeah i i um I second your opinion. I think three races in three weeks is just way too much for anyone at Ferrari to handle besides the drivers. So stay tuned for that shit show. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, prove us wrong, Ferrari. I'm a, like, I am not your number one fan, but like, I love you. I don't have you tattooed on my body, but I'm a huge Ferrari fan and I still just don't see it coming together. But. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. But with this being a sprint weekend, we do have more official race laps than normal. And we are, you know, kind of keeping track of Max's race to a thousand laps led. So Catherine, where are we in that? Can he still make it? Give us that update. Yeah. So in, in the race to a thousand laps led in a single season, Max has extended his current record to 854 laps for this season. Um, there's about 203 laps remaining. I'm saying about 203 because I feel like every time I look it up, it's a different number. Um, but it's just over 200 laps remaining and Max needs 146 to make it to a thousand, which I, I think it's going to, I think it's going to be close. Um, and I think it's all predicated on his performance because this is also a longer sprint race. Um, usually the sprint races are 19 laps, but because, um, Interlagos is a, is a shorter track, um, they had to extend it. So this is a 24 lap sprint instead of a 19 lap sprint so that it has the hundred kilometers distance that a, a sprint race is. So I think he's, he's still got a chance. It, it's there's, He's got a decent margin. But it'll just be, you know, a Wikipedia, you know, accolade. It won't mean anything. No, so. it, it, it never does unless it's Mercedes breaking a record. Wink. Never, Toto. <laughs> never. Never going to let Toto live that down. No, it was so funny. Just like I'll never let Checo live down the double DNF. Nope. So. Never. Never. Some things you just can't live down. But I am just really excited for saturday to be over because then we don't have to ever talk about a sprint race until next I year no and until they they announce which races next year are the sprint we can put the sprint behind us we can focus our concerns on vegas and on abu dhabi um and then figure out what the heck we're gonna do in, with our lives in the off season i know i don't know what i'll do i'll have like time again yeah it's wild wild Uh, But anyways, that has been the podcast. Coming up next, we will have our Sao Paulo Grand Prix recap coming out on Monday, pending (laughs) internet (laughs) issues, but (laughs) hoping for Monday. It's that my art, my like 
saying of it's coming out on Monday is your telling of how many laps are left in the season. Exactly. <laughs> ish early in the week but no hopefully coming to you guys on monday but that has been the podcast thanks for coming (laughs) emily can't podcast past 10 o'clock at night that's been the podcast thanks for going off track with us guys